If you're struggling to get your double bass drumming to sound fast and tight, but it just sounds like a sloppy, hot, garbage mess, then this video is for you. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to unlock both your speed and control with your double bass drumming, so that way you can nail those fast and precise metal drumming songs that you love to play along to. I've worked with big names like Grayson Necrutman from Sepultura, Eric Bobo from Cypress Hill, Steve-O32 from Sum 41, and Chris Hornberg from Poison the Well to improve their drumming skills. I've also helped thousands of drummers in person and all over the world. Now it's your turn. Let's dive in. Before we jump into specific exercises, it's important to understand the fundamentals of control and speed first. Speed is all about utilizing efficient technique at faster rates of speed and using the right muscle groups to do so. But control and accuracy is what separates good drummers to great ones. Control is what allows you to maintain consistency and accuracy and overall independence throughout your drumming, even at faster and higher speeds. Now let's start off with a simple warm up routine because as you'll know, getting behind the drums just right away is tough to get into that feel of being warm. So what I like to do are single strokes, easily just right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. But here's the twist, okay? We're not just gonna do this. We're gonna separate both muscle groups from the toes doing heel down and from the calves doing heel up. So foot down, we're gonna go like this, okay? What this is gonna allow us to do is develop that portion of the stroke that allows us to get our foot out of the way of the pedal, right? So when we're, that foot needs to go down and it needs to come back up to receive the pedal to start it all over again. So just by alternating singles with our flat foot, this is gonna develop our faster twitch motions in the smaller muscle group within the location of our shins right here. Okay, and oftentimes you feel that when you're playing your double pedals and it really, it's difficult to continue on. So we'll do that. And you can also play them as unisons, meaning they both hit at the same time. That way you can tell if there's any imbalance of pressure between both the left and the right foot. If there are, you're gonna start hearing flams like that. Right? Okay. Now that we have that covered, we can do that for 30 seconds. Make sure you do nice big strokes. You get that foot up high enough so that pedal comes back and that beater swing is there to help you. Same with the spring tension, okay? You'll notice that it's gonna be rather difficult and then we're gonna switch to the heel up, okay? So we're gonna practice pushing in with our toes, the heel comes up, and then it kind of goes vertical and stays in the air, and then drops down, right? So like this, down. It's kind of like an ollie on a skateboard. Up, down, right? And if your pedals are set up properly, the pedal will actually follow your foot. If it doesn't, you might want to increase the spring tension on that ever so slightly. Okay, we wanna start slow, make sure the accuracy is there before we start to speed things up. And they have to be nice and even dynamically, right? So we don't want soft, loud, soft, loud, 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 soft, soft. We wanna try and maintain consistent pressure on the pedals, okay? The key here is to, of course, stay relaxed as you start to apply a little bit more speed. Remember, tension is the enemy of speed. So if you do feel yourself tensing up, just drop it down a little bit. Next thing we need to talk about is foot independence. Now, this is crucial for control, believe it or not. One of the best ways to develop foot independence is playing ostinatos with our feet. You'll see a lot of Latin players do this, and it's really great for double bass drumming, and same thing with jazz guys playing on two and four. However, 
We're gonna go a little bit differently at this so it helps our double bass drumming. One pattern I like to do is triplet bass, right? So I'll do right, left, left. So. One triplet, two triplet, okay? And then you can play alternating eighth note triplets with your hands. And if that seems to be too difficult, you can always start with right foot, left foot, or doing doubles, right? So you can do this, or this. Okay, now the important part here is layering this with our hands because we want our feet to be mechanical in a way and we want to be able to express ourselves with facility and be able to orchestrate it, meaning just place it around the drums while our feet are continually playing something similarly. I'll do right, left, left of my feet and then I'll just play around the drum kit while keeping that pattern. Now, this is not only gonna help you out with your control on the left foot, especially with the left foot on the hi-hat, because if it's not clean and accurate, it's gonna splash like this. And in fact, what's happening here is it actually causes us to approach things a little bit more untraditionally, where it actually creates more versatility and creativity within our ability to communicate with our instrument. So you can mix it up. and then add your hands over top to see where any friction is. If you encounter some friction, then of course those areas need to be challenged and practice. All right, now let's tackle speed. One of the most effective ways to develop speed is no surprise and no secret. It's much like lifting weights. We're not gonna bench press 300 pounds if we can't curl 25 pounds multiple, multiple, multiple times. We just don't have the physical ability and the mental ability to do so. So how we need to approach this is one simple way of using drills. I'm not talking about like power drills. I'm talking about like maybe more ice skating or just repetitive tasks. And so where I like to start with the tempo is something just outside of my comfort zone. Again, we wanna grow, we don't wanna maintain. So let's say for instance, you're playing at 140 and you wanna play at 180. I would practice around 145 and 150. And what you're gonna do is just try and maintain the feet in a simple pattern over top of your hands like this. Now, the idea here is to repeat exposure to that and become more comfortable with it. Again, if you feel like just a basic rock beat over top is kind of monotonous and boring, then start to add some more flair and play some fills over top because what you'll find is as soon as you come back into beat one, it's gonna be hard to get that aligned, especially if you're practicing at a tempo that is a little bit challenging. Another thing I like to do is of course, a little bit of a mind game with ourselves. So let's say we can't play 160 or 165. What we can do is play it in shorter bursts and gradually introduce that new pathway in our brain to be able to play that. So how I like to do this is while adding the hands over top, okay? Instead of trying to go where it becomes difficult, again, like this. Now what's interesting about this is of course, you know, over how many ever days you're working on this, that you'll, be, you'll find it's a lot more comfortable to play in that range you once could not. And so what's interesting about this is you can just keep adding the amount of notes you're playing. So instead of playing, you can play this. Now this is going to help you develop your speed gradually without actually sacrificing your accuracy or your control. If you still find it's inaccurate or it's kind of sluggish on the left side, 
then we need to work on the independence within our left side and help build that four-way coordination up. Now that you've built up your control and your speed separately, the biggest thing here is that I see a lot of drummers just working on their feet, but never adding their hands. And so that's a whole other step they have to add onto it, and then they need to apply it musically. So what I like to do right out the gate is consistently practice with my feet and my hands simultaneously, meaning I'm developing that coordination, I'm developing that sense of time, I'm developing that independence and that control and speed and consistency simultaneously. The real trick here is to switch that headspace from going to practice mode to playing mode, right? So you'll notice a lot of times what you can do in the practice room is really hard to put to a song because that specific tempo or accompanying instruments. And this is where the real kicker is, is being able to separate what you're playing from the music and be able to have it live symbiotically within each other, right? So be able to pull away from the music, add the music, and be able to play the things that you're able to practice. So remember, it's not just about playing all of this stuff fast, it's about playing fast and accurate. So if you are trying to play too fast, just slow it down, refocus on precision, your control, and your sense of internal time. And remember, this stuff does not come overnight. As you know now, practicing this for weeks and months and even years, it takes consistency, it takes persistence. So as long as you understand what you need to be focusing on, and if what you're focusing on is the right thing, then you're set. You just need to keep at it and add some more time to it, right? Wrong. You need somebody to actually check out your blind spots. Like I've got two teachers, Tiger Wood has teachers. You know, anybody that is trying to develop something has blind spots, right? So if we don't know what we don't know, it's hard to make those course corrections to understand what it is that we need to work on. And that's why I'm offering some free strategy sessions. Just click the link down in the description below. We'll hop on a call one-on-one, -on -one, completely free, and we'll discuss your goals, where you wanna go, and to see if what we're doing inside of the Metal Drummers Collective, which is our program, can seamlessly help you integrate what we're teaching drummers into your practice. And if that sounds like something that you're interested, just click that link down below. And if you don't want to, no harm, no foul, I'm gonna put a playlist right up here for you to check out so you can further develop your double bass drumming skills. I'll see you there.